Okay. Um, so about the talk, so this is Connection Manager. Let me minimize this so I can actually see. Um, so th this talk is basically getting started with Connection Manager. Um, right now on the both the IBM and the HCL website, there is documentation about Connection Manager. It's all over the place that you have to you know, bounce back and forth between docs to try to actually get the information together to get Connection Manager set up. So pulled it together in, in one single place. Um, sorry, one second. There we go. Um, so real quick, uh, what is Connection Manager? It's a standalone program. Um, it's part of the, it's bundled with the CSDK uh, that basically passes connections to the correct server or group. Um, it's been around since version 11.5. Um, they, you know, you can use any of the newer versions of the CSDK with the older version of Informix. Um, it's set up as a central broker. Uh, you can have multiple connection manager servers running together so you can uh, spread out the load and also make it more redundant. Um, it's initially set up for high availability, but it can be used uh, in a number of different ways. And I really should have updated this that uh, when I updated the presentation, there's OAT and Informix HQ modules for it. So topology of it, topology of it real quick. So you have clients that connect to the connection manager. The connection manager will have several groups of servers. And then depending on the rules you, you provide, will you know, go to whatever server you, you know, you're telling the users to go to. So for me as a client, all I know is the connection manager. It does all the magic under the covers to uh, get me to the server I really should be going to. So again, it can be as simple as one connection manager and one server. Um, very simple. It gives you a single point of connection. It also, say, it just like with any other single server, single point of failure. Uh, but it gives you the flexibility that you can control the server. You can have the connection manager play middleman, so users don't have to connect directly to Informix. Um, you know, it gives you some extra flexibility there. And if you're migrating servers and they maybe don't have the same host name or IP address, um, you don't have to change, have the users change their connection strings. They just continue to connect to the connection manager and the connection manager will know where to where the new server is pointed at. Um, you can set it up as a replication set to go to whichever server you want to go to. Um, you can have multiple groups with their own rules. So you can have one high availability set and one disaster recovery set. Um, so again, I'm running through where we yeah, got 20 minutes. So <laughs> I've got a fair amount of slides here. So I'm glossing over a little bit. Um, if you are, if the server is not trusted by, if the two servers, the connection manager server and the Informix server are not trusted, um, you don't have host equiv or our host set up um, uh, or more remote server config, um, you can use the on password utility to set up um, authentication between them. It does need to be able to talk to the Informix server, um, you know, but that way you don't have to have users talk directly to the Informix server. So the relevant files we care about here is SQL hosts. Um, there are two different SQL host files, one of which will be the SQL host file on your connection manager server. Um, this might be the same server your Informix is on. It may be a separate one. Hopefully it's a separate one. That's usually a good plan. Uh, so that'll actually control both the listeners for the connection manager, as well as needing entries for the uh, Informix server. The second SQL host will actually be on your client systems, where that'll only need to have the connection string inf or the, the entries for your connection manager. It does not need entries for your Informix server. Um, next file is the Informixster slash bin slash on CMSM. This is the actual connection manager binary. Um, it comes with a sample file, uh, just like Scott mentioned with uh, the on config, with the CMSM config, keep the sample file around. It's useful to reference back to. Um, and then you can also have a CM alarm program that'll actually allow you to capture and do something with uh, uh, handling if there's failovers or other connection manager problems. Um, be aware this is not created by default, but you do not necessarily need to have one.
Um, so on config parameters we care about, um, DR Auto, uh, you have not messed with it and you're using HDR, this is how uh, failovers are handled. If you have three, if you have set it to three, it'll let Connection Manager be the arbiter on if a failover is gonna happen. Um, the other one is the HA FOC order. So this is if you're doing a failover, uh, what server is going to be second? Is it going to be your SDS server, your HDR server, or is it going to go straight to um, an RSS server? Again, this only matters if you're doing automatic failover. So on CMSM, the binary, you pass it uh, dash C to your config file, or if you have the environment variable cmconfig point to the config file, you don't need the dash C. Uh, if you do it with the dash, K, if you do it without anything, it'll start the servers. Uh, if you do it with a dash K, it stops it. And if you do a dash R, it'll reload it. It's fairly straightforward. So an example of what SQL host looks like. Um, so you have your Informix instance, instance one TCP. So it's on your host. You've got your SQL, you tell it the port number. Not sure why that underscore got added in there. We'll get that fixed. So it should be a separate column for the IP. Um, then you have a connection manager listener. So this will actually listen on port 9090. Um, and we're gonna call this connection manager listener report group. So this is really simple. We got some more examples in a minute. Um, so connection manager config file, this is a really sample, simple one. So you give it the name, which is the name of the connection manager, your log file, and then you give it a cluster. So this is a cluster is a description of the server or servers you're connecting to. Um, so you tell it the Informix server you're looking at, um, and then you create a report group for an SLA. Um, and we're gonna call that uh, actually report group. Um, I'm sorry, the SLA name is report group in this example. And then we actually tell it the DB, the servers with the DB server parameter. In this case, we're just telling it primary. I go into all of this in a minute. So, uh, so again, the connection, there's some other sample things, you know, do you want to log out? What's their timeout, et cetera. So I'm going to actually go through the parameters here. Um, so this is actually in our CMSM config file. So the name, it needs to be unique across the cluster of connection managers. So if you're running five different connection managers, you can cluster them so they all know each other. They'll do their own failover, everything else. But each one needs to have its own unique name. Um, the log level, if you want it on or off or higher level, your log file. Um, so the CM timeout, it's by default 60 seconds. If you're using DR Auto 3, um, this is the parameter it looks at for if um, a primary has been non responsive for this many seconds, it'll start issuing the uh, failover to whatever one is defined as your next one to promote. Um, so the event timeout, it's a secondary one. Um, basically, this is a adds them together before the fail uh, failover occurs. Um, you know, secondary event timeout is when it actually will disconnect from a secondary. SQL host, you can actually define if you want to use local, remote, or both to find instances. So it'll actually, depending on how you have it, it by default it's local plus remote. Um, so you can say local or remote or both. Um, will actually read, if it's local, it'll only read on the connection manager instance. If it's remote, it'll actually go out to the Informix server you've defined and read its SQL host file. Or if you say both, it'll read both of them and pull all of the entries. Um, this is used to figure out what the cluster is set up as. Um, if you wanna have a local IP, you can bind it to a specific IP address, otherwise it listens to all. And macros are used to um, pass variables to the other parts of the config file. So connection types, I showed you cluster in the example. So if you're doing HDR, um, you need to use cluster. There's grid if you're using ER grid connections, REPL set, which will actually be traditional ER without grid, and server set if you do not have failover, you're just pointing straight to a server or to a standard group, but you're not doing HDR failover. So a cluster example, so it will start out with the, uh, the type of connection, so in this case it's cluster, and then we give it a name. 
Um, that name is shared, needs to be shared across all of the connection manager servers of your connection manager cluster. Um, so just make sure it's consistent. We give it the Informix server. We give it the SLA, and in this case, we're calling it report one, and we're telling it the DB servers, we want primary and HDR. And then we give it a policy, and I'll give you what these variables are in a moment. So it'll actually go, can, uh, send the connections either to the primary or to the secondary, depending on who is less busy. So this is really good if you have multiple servers and you have somebody that wants to run a big report, it'll send it to the one that's least busy. Um, FOC is the order of failover and priority is needs to be unique for the cluster for the connection manager. So it's which or which server is going to be the arbiter if there's an automatic failover. Because if you have five connection manager servers, you don't want all five trying to be able to initiate uh, failovers. You want the one with the lowest priority to be the master. Um, if priority one is down, it'll go to priority two, et cetera. So, I just broke down a little bit. So this slide just breaks down each of the fields. So the Informix server value, uh, value, that is there for all four types, cluster, grid, um, uh, REPL set, and uh, uh, server set. Um, you know, you give it the server, you know, the connection um, information on what is the default server it should be connecting to. SLA. Um, so you saw I mentioned it there, we gave it a name, that's service level agreement. So this is uh, the directive of how we're gonna handle a group of servers. Um, link connection managers need to have the same name and same information on the SLA. Um, each SLA, and you can have multiple SLAs for a group, um, will does need to have its own listener port. You can't run multiple SLAs, just like you can't run multiple DB server aliases on the same port. You can't run multiple SLAs on the same port. So I'm gonna go through the uh, the different flags. Again, the slide deck will be out there so you can go back and reference this. Um, so I go through each of the parameters and what they, the different options are. Um, so this is for the DB servers for HDR. It's what are the um, servers we're connecting to? It could be HDR, SDS, any. Um, could be primary. There's some different options um, on this slide. So this is the different options there. You can group them to give it an order. Um, there is the SLA mode, and I'll show an example of this. This is, do you want to use redirect, which will connect the user directly to the server, or proxy that'll run them, uh, treat the connection manager as a middleman, run all the traffic through the connection manager rather than getting out of the way. Um, if you're running old code, you're running old ancient CSDK, or you're running a third party driver, you do need to use proxy. So an example of how this works for a redirect. Um, so the client will connect to the connection manager. Connection manager will follow the rules pointed to group one. And group one will, let's say, secondary is the least busy. So we'll um, point to the secondary server. It then will basically hand off the secondary, uh, the connection to the secondary directly to the client. All of this is under the covers. You don't have to uh, do anything else with it. And then from then on, the clients will actually connect directly to the secondary, run their SQL directly against it, but it will only know the connection string information for the connection manager, uh, but then the connection manager just gets out of the way. If you're using proxy, on the other hand, you connect to the connection manager, it tells it where it's going, and then what it does is it runs all the SQL back and forth from the primary to the connection manager, and then back to the clients. So you have the connection manager in the middle, um, where especially if you don't want the users being able to reach directly to an Informix server, this can be a good way to put it. You could put your connection manager in a DMZ, for example, and that way there it does not need to have anything else exposed to the end users. Um, use aliases. This one is bit you know bit me a few times. Um, by default, when it goes out and does the discovery of SQL hosts, it'll pull every server alias that's in there and try to connect to them. Um, you may not want them if you have shared memory connections, you've got other specialty port ones, 
um, you know, you're running things on a custom port that is only available to other servers. Um, you may not want to have people actually try to connect to those, which will then fail. Um, so if use aliases on as default, it'll pull all of the aliases. If you set it to off, it'll only use the DB server name. It won't use any of the aliases. So just be aware of how your configuration set up. Uh, the, this can be an important one. Um, next one is workers. So this matters for proxy um, defaults for it's how many worker threads the connection manager is allocated. So if you're dealing with a proxy server and it's really busy, you're probably going to increase the number of workers. Um, so the policy um, option is, you know, with uh, any of these, how do you want to handle it? Um, workload is the d default, so it'll go to whatever is the least busy. Round robin will just hand it off to multiple servers. Um, failure, and this is uh, for ER only, um, it will go to the server with the fewest apply failures. So if you've got some on flaky connections, it will bypass those. Um, latency, also same thing with ER, it'll go to whatever the fastest server is. Um, and then it's uh, for cluster, it's uh, the sec apply backlog. Um, if it, the backlog gets too big, it'll stop sending requests over to it and focus entirely on the primary. Um, so this can be useful if you're running RSSs that may be falling behind. Um, FOC is our failover control. Um, so this is a defined element in the config file. Um, this tells it what order do we fail over if there if automatic failover is in place. Um, if you're not using automatic failover, this really won't impact you. Um, so the order it default will actually use the um, if it's not defined, it'll use the HA FOC order from on config. If neither are set, it'll use SDS HDR RSS for it. Um, but if you set it, it'll follow whatever the directive is. Um, and if it's set to enable, it'll. If it's not set to enable, it will not allow failover, even if uh, DR auto is set to three. Um, if you enable it, then it'll be available to play. Um, decide when failover happens. Uh, your priority is the priority of the connection manager. One is uh, lower. You know, one is the lowest. You know, every so it'll take priority, and then it'll go up from there if one is not available. Um, so you require that for cluster types. Um, really, this only impacts you if you're running multiple connection managers. Just figure out what, what your order will be, and it really only impacts for dealing with auto failover. Timeout is additional time. So you can actually say from um, particular cl uh, cluster information, what, how long do we want to wait on top of the one where we actually have the CM timeout on the connection manager itself? How much extra time do we want it, to, want it to wait? If you have a cluster that you know is flaky, you may want to give it a little bit more time than one that you know should be rock solid. Um, SQL hosts will, um, uh, looks at the basically which SQL host is it looking at. Um, it by default will read local and go to the remote. Um, so you can basically it'll tell it how to you know determine what the primary server is, secondary server, etc. By querying the um, SQL host uh, value that you're looking for. So um, just best practice always use a group. Um, just it's easier to manage them and easier to to group them. Um, you know when you're dealing with replication. So there are four different names you need to know, and I, this slide is really important. If you take nothing else from this, take the slide in. Um, so uh, there are four names in the config file. Um, the first one is your name of the connection manager. So again, this needs to be unique on your connection manager cluster. The second one here is the cluster name. This you want to have the same in every connection manager in the cluster. So this will actually be defining the group. The third one is the Informix server uh, value, you know, server name we are trying to connect to. Um, so in this case, we're looking at cluster one. So it'll actually go read the Informix server values, look for the name cluster one in there, and use that as the cluster we're looking at, um, or the group, or the server, or 
you know, whatever we are looking at, that's the particular entry from SQL host we're going to use. And then the fourth one is the SLA name. So this will actually be the name of your connection manager listener in SQL host. Um, so this needs to be, will have its own port and its own connection info. Um, this is the name that you give out to, to client systems. Um, and then just an example on the DD servers are going primary, secondary. So an example SQL host. So you've got your HDR pair of, you know, system one, system two, both on 98 on different servers. We're going to call that cluster one. And then we're going to create a connect group of connection manager listeners. Um, so we have report one, which is server one and report two on server two. Um, so notice that they're using a different port number than the Informix listener. Um, so we could actually have users connect to just the group report and it'll point it to the correct um, report server. And that way, if report one goes offline, it'll fail it over to end use group two. Um, so that way you get the, the uh, more parallelism and more, um, you know, peace of mind that one server is not going to be a single point of failure. So for your application, for your cust for your clients, all you need is the report and for the report group, the, the SLA information. Um, it does not need to have the Informix uh, SQL host info um, in there. So the log for on CSM, CM, SM, you know, it'll look something like this where you actually goes through, it initializes your listeners, and then you'll actually see each of the listeners actually go out connect to uh, the different servers and actually show you what the rules are. Um, and if something fails, you know, it can't connect to the server, you know, you'll get a notice here. Um, then it actually shows you that it's connected and then actually show you which server is viewed as the primary. So it'll actually show you just, you know, it connecting through to the system and where it's connecting to. Um, a little bit more here, just with a little bit more of the log. Um, you see it just going through connecting to all of the systems um, as part of that of part of that um, HDR set. It'll actually go through and connect to all of them to make sure it can connect. So um, when you have logging on, it'll actually show you the client connections. It doesn't show you any information about what they're trying to do, but it will show you the initial connection. Um, so you can see it's coming from 10, 10, 20, 60, and then it's going to redirect it over to May TCP on, uh, you know, port, uh, 1088. Um, so you can see from each of these connections, it'll go to different rules, um, and connect accordingly. You, there's also on stat G CMSM, which will actually show you every listener tied to a server. Um, and you know how many connections what port it's on and what the rule set is so this is really useful to monitor your system so best practices and i know i'm running through this quickly but trying to trying to make time um, again use groups rather than just pointing to an individual server just best practice when dealing with multiple servers um, run more than one connection manager so you don't have that single point of failure for connections coming in um, it's not required, but it's not a bad idea to have the connection managers on a different server from the instance. So that way, if the uh, server itself goes down or you take it down for maintenance, you're not also taking down the connection manager that people may be connected to. Uh, yeah. yeah. There are a couple questions in the chat. Okay. If you want to stop now, but don't stop on my account. <laughs> you're, you're in charge here. I'm just the technician. No, I appreciate it. Um, so. I think all of the, oh, uh, last one here, I do want to highlight and then I'll get to questions. Um, make sure applications reconnect with at least a short delay. When a failover occurs or connection manager is pointing to a new server, um, it takes a little bit of time. You know, you have that 60 second cool down to see if it reconnects and whatever other timeouts you have, then it has to change the secondary to a primary, do all the other failover stuff. It can take a minute or two minutes. Um, make sure your applications have some time on their reconnect um, to make sure to account for that. I, I've had a couple of clients that their uh, application was set up to do immediate reconnects. So the primary server would go down. Connection manager, you know, is in that 60 second window looking for it to come back up before it starts failover. In the meantime, the, the application is going 
connect, fail, connect, fail, connect, fail, done. Um, give it some time out, give it a little bit longer, make sure it can, can wait. Um, all right, I'm gonna get to questions here real quick and then I'll get to the rest of this. Um, So uh, how the firewall works, I put 9088 behind the firewall and public to uh, 10,088. Does it allow applications to connect to the world? Um, so if you have 10088 uh, in front of the firewall, um, so assuming your connection manager server is outside your firewall, your Informix server is behind the firewall, um, the application users will connect to the connection manager server on port uh, 1088. Uh, or 10,088. So they'll connect there and then connection manager will, if you're using proxy, uh, go behind the scenes and connect directly to the Informix server. So the connection manager and the Informix server need to have firewall ports open between the two, but you don't need to have that firewall open to the world. All you need is those two to be able to talk. And that way the users can only get to the connection manager. They can't get to the Informix server. Um, for what is the use of on password and connection manager? Do we need to use it? If you're not using trusted hosts, and I've actually got a thing about this uh, coming up here, but if you're not using trusted hosts, so the connection manager can't connect to uh, Informix without um, you know, prompting for a password, uh, you do need to use on password or another mechanism to trust the server or have a shared password um, to allow this to connection manager to connect uh, passwordlessly. Um, because it needs to to be able to pass the connection through. Um, so uh, from client to connection manager to group to secondary, then you connect directly from the client to the secondary system. When would it need to check for whether primary or secondary is busier again? or does it stay there unless that server becomes unavailable? Um, no, that's a really good question. Um, once a connection has been established, so you've, you know, the, the client connects the connection manager, it goes through its logic to point it to whichever server is the correct one. It'll maintain that connection as long as the connection is open. Um, if you do a reconnect, it may, you know, structure it differently, point to a different server. But as long as that connection's open, it'll uh, remain with the same Informix server. All right, go through the last little bit here. Um, so uh, things to be cautious of. Split brain, I'll have a slide on in a second. Um, actually, all these I'll have a slide on in a moment. I'm going to skim through because we're really running low in time. Um, so our issues are listening, listeners missing information, alias issues, uh, missing trust, and uh, making sure the DB server name is the TCP listener. So split brain, uh, really quick, what happens there, and this is not Informix specific, but this is anytime you're dealing with replication, where you normally have a primary and secondary. So the primary controls everything, the secondary just gets the replication sent to it. Um, what can happen is if there is a failover that occurs, but the prime, original primary is still online, but the secondary doesn't think the primary is still up. The network connection breaks between the two of them, for example. And then the secondary is promoted. So now the, both the original primary and the secondary are both primaries. They're both uh, processing transactions, uh, even if it's just the internal Informix transactions. Um, and now they are on different log chains. As soon as, soon as two Informix servers are on separate log chains, they no longer can replicate with each other and one or the other is going to need to get restored um, uh, to be able to reconnect. Um, the danger with the connection manager as a third party piece that can handle if DR auto is three, handle the failovers, if the connection manager is disconnected from the primary and the prim you know, the primary's network connection goes down, the network adapter fails, something happens there. Um, the connection manager will see the primary is offline and then promote the secondary. Even though the primary is still online, it just isn't connected to the network. Um, that's the big danger, and this is true for any kind of automatic failover. Uh, just be very careful with your uh, network planning that you only you make sure that you're very sure that um, 
you're ready to fail over when it happens and it's not potentially a network outage. Um, you can also use the, the alarm program to, you know, shut down the primary if, if the connection manager lives on the primary server. If the network connection is down, um, you know, you can also use third party tools to handle this. Um, many clients I have just as, just opt to send notices if something's down and do the failover manually. Um, real example, real quick example, you know, connections lost. Connection manager promotes the secondary while the network is down to the primary. They both come back up, or the the you know the connection comes back. Suddenly they're on different log chains, and you've got split brain, and you've got to you know manually resolve it. So listeners missing information, just be aware of this. You'll get a 930 error if a listener can't connect to that listener port. Um, it's usually that there's something misconfigured or missing from SQL hosts on the connection manager. Um, same thing where you also get uh, sorted errors if you use the same port for multiple SLAs or something else is listening on the ports. Um, the connection manager listeners won't be able to come up. Uh, alias issues. So again, this is, uh, do you want to use aliases uh, for use aliases flag? Um, it'll query all of them by default, try to connect to all of them by default. So if you have other types of connections or specific connections on the server, it could potentially try to route through, you know, route connections to the wrong one. Um, trusted sources is just make sure that uh, the connection manager and the Informix server can talk without prompting for a password. Um, so you can use an encrypted password uh, using the on password to encrypt the file. It stores it as your Informix server slash etc plus uh, slash password file. And then you can actually then uh, pass that password file over between the two servers and they should be able to connect. Um, so resources. Uh, yeah, there's connection manager manual info. So they have a fair amount of good stuff in there uh, to dig through information on Informix replication. If you're not using it, I really recommend you may, you know, you look at it. Um, if you're not aware, uh, Informix does on enterprise edition, workgroup edition, allow for a warm standby. So a secondary server, as long as you don't do work on it, obviously talk to your license rep about this. Um, Andrew Ford has a really good uh, blog entry. It's a little old, but it's still very accurate for set, um, just getting going with HDR if you have not used it before. Uh, information about the connection manager, what the alert uh, error codes mean. Uh, a quick uh, IBM article on doing using on password to set up uh, the connections between the two. And then a little bit of information on SSL using connection manager. Um, Gonna, are there any other questions in chat? That doesn't look like it. Um, thank you, Tom Beebe with XDB Systems. Um, I'm gonna add on there, and this also puts me on the spot. I am working on an article to actually step through setting up SSL with Connection Manager because there are a few steps involved. And especially now that um, Informix supports open SSL, not just GS Kit. So I'm working on an article for that. I don't have a release date. Hopefully it won't be too long, but if you need SSL and connection manager, I will put out a notice once that is ready. So I think that's it for that. I know I ran through very quickly um, and I appreciate you all bearing with me. I just wanted to make sure we made time.